Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video I'm going to show you how to make these craft show display stands and this is a second version that I'm doing is I did the first ones and after using them and stuff and I found out some weaknesses about them and some other modifications I did to improve them a lot. One of the modifications I did was to cut off this leg a little bit here because otherwise it extended out too far and kind of obstructed some of the display stands I wanted to put on there for my products. Also, these top parts here, because they're so narrow and the wood grains kind of run the vertical way, these were very weak and would break off very easily. So I put these splines in to give them strength. Now they're very strong and aren't going to break off easily. So, stay tuned here. I'm going to show you how I make these. Okay, I have two boards here. They're one by six by eight foot long, and it's a better pine board. And this first one, I'm just going to cut into three pieces, or three equal sections, which will each be 32 inches long, therefore the width of the shelf. The second board, I'm going to cut out my patterns that I've laid out onto here. I'll make the major cuts to get these pieces out, and then I will finesse them further down on my table saw and band saw. Now, I'm only using about half of this board here to do this. If you added one more eight foot piece and with this left over, you can make two shelves out of this. Might be a good way to go. Okay, I've made three cuts here. One to take off the excess board that I don't need. Another one to separate these legs out from it. And these two pieces will be the brackets that will hold the shelves. And I'll go on further to make some 45 degree cut. Then I'll go to my table saw and bandsaw for making the different slots that I need on this. Here at the bandsaw, I've got my pieces cut out in this shape. And got my marks laid out on here. This is where we're going to be making my cuts for the slots on the bandsaw. What I'll do is adhere these two pieces together with some double stick tape. Then I'll line them up on my fence here. And then line that up to line up with the lines that I want to cut. And then I'll put those through and cut those slots out. And the same with this. I'll line up my fence and cut out this slot on this side too. Okay, I've stuck these boards together with double stick tape and I've adjusted my fence here. I'm going to do a cut on the center one here and I line up the blade so I should just leave pencil mark there and then I'll do the other cut the same way. Up to this point here on both ends and then I can break out and chisel off anything that's left there. If it's a little bit tight yet when I get done cutting this, I can tweak it with some sandpaper or a chisel to get so I got a good fit. Okay, these slots pop right out of there pretty easily. Just hit it with the claw of my hammer, and they just pop right out. Then I'll clean these up with the chisel to get them good and square. And the same way with popping this one off. What I'm doing here is cleaning these up with the file, get them good and smooth, and also to get the edges so they're all cleaned up enough and the opening is tweaked so that these boards will fit in snugly. Kind of a friction fit, doesn't want to be real tight, don't want to be too loose either. So friction fit is good. And as I mentioned before, I cut these out to the pencil lines and I'd rather that these be too tight than too loose because I can make these larger with the filing so that these fit. Okay, as I was showing you in the beginning there, this joint here is weak because the wood grain's running this direction. So this is a weak joint here. If you put a shelf in and you apply any pressure, this is what's happened to me is this will break off right at this green right here. Uh, the rest of these are good and strong. It's not a problem. It's just this one that's a problem. So if you can see if you get it in there you get cockeyed a little bit. It just kind of breaks off pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and put a spline in here of some hardwood to give that a lot more strength. I am setting up here to cut the grooves in these boards for putting those splines in to strengthen this upper part here that is so weak. I found a piece of hardwood scrap. Looks like a piece of red oak. It's a quarter inch thick. So I did some test cuts and found out where to have my fence set at so I can go through this, rotate, go through it to get the width that I need to fit this snugly. Now what I will do is this board's already been cut for these two angles. This one has not been cut yet. I'm going to keep these square angles here 
So that will facilitate for me to feed this through here and get the width and cut that I need. I have my blade raised to 5 eighths of an inch because the distance between this here, a little bit less than an inch. Three quarters of an inch is pretty good, but that's getting awful close into there. So I kind of split the difference and went with 5 eighths of an inch. So I set my blade height to 5 eighths of an inch. Turn on my air filter and get rid of the smoke. So that leaves me with a strip in the middle here that I'll remove. I'll just kind of break it off with a screwdriver here. Got to be kind of careful with doing this because this is a weak point. Yeah, clean these out of here. Okay, got those pretty well cleaned out. What I'm going to do is use a about a quarter inch or a one eighth inch chisel to clean that up. Okay, so the quarter inch chisel does fit in here pretty good. So I can get this all cleaned up and I'll have a good surface for gluing this in. And this strip fits in. Good snug fit. So I cut the width of this strip here, fit the slot that I'm putting it into. That's how I'm splining this together. I have cut the spline slots in these boards for the shelves and put in a piece of hardboard. This one looks to be a red oak that I cut down to size to fit into the slot and I've glued them in. I've got them clamped in and I'll let that dry. I'm dripping some glue but that'll clean up easily enough too. And that'll give this point that's going to be weak a lot more strength. Then when that glue is done I'll come back and cut these corners off as they're supposed to be according to the design. Okay, now that I've got these splines cut up and glued into this board here, I'm going to cut off these corners here by these pencil marks, and then I'll get this all cleaned up. Then I'll go to the router, round over with a 1 8 inch round over bit, and then do some sanding to get it all good and smooth. Okay, so I've got this corners cut off. Got a very nice spline in here, and that'll give it a lot of strength to really hold really well. Next on is to go to the router and do some round over and then some sanding. Okay, one step here before I set up the router, I'm going to make the shelves too. And it's uh, three boards as I took the eight foot long board and then cut it into three pieces. Because 96 inches divided by three is 32 inches. And these each come out 32 inches exactly. And what I did is I just measured in 32 inches from one end of the eight foot board, marked it, then 32 inches from the other end of the board and marked it, and they all came out exactly the same. Then I came here to the table using my micro jig match fit again here to set this up and then cut out these dados here or these slots for when the shelves go on and they'll line up with the shelf legs or shelf supports. Now I'm ready at the router here. I will put these boards through, round over all four edges. I won't do the notches themselves, just the outer edges. And then the same thing with the support boards. I will round all these edges over, except I won't do inside these slots at all. Now I have all my pieces cut up, rounded, so that they're rounded over on the edges. Next step I'm going to do is to start sanding these down to about a 220 grit. Then I'll also go around with the sandpaper and dress up all these edges that were not rounded over. Here I will go over this with some 220 grit sandpaper. Get in these edges here and kind of smooth it over. Doesn't take it a lot. Around all the edges and get it all smoothed over. So back at my table saw here, I cut these legs to have a 45 degree angle on here for so hold the stands like that and I just passed it through tilted my blade to a 45 degree angle passed it through on my miter gauge here and kind of taking small parts off until I got it to a point 
where it sat level like that. And so it's just kind of tweaking it a little bit and getting it to stand like this. So that's good. Now I can start assembling this. And these should just kind of slip together like a friction fit. They're a little bit tight, just a little bit of sanding can get them so they fit. Also, different parts of the country depends on what your humidity is, because that can cause the wood to you know, expand or contract on you. So, so where we have the shelves, all set to go. Then they just disassemble and come apart. You have to be able to be careful with them. They are pine, so they're not the strongest thing in the world. So they all collapse down. Store compactly. Wrap them up with something and port them to your site where you're going to have your craft show or whatever and set up and put out your displays. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you got something out of it and you got the inspiration to make something, please give me a like. Also, share it with your family and friends and fellow craftspersons. And be sure to subscribe and be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on anything. If the women don't find you handsome, at least they should find you handy. Thank you.